All right. Hey guys. Happy Monday. Hope you guys all had a great weekend and uh, sorry I'm not able to be there with you today, but hopefully we can uh, sit down and get some awesome stuff going. Now, um, some of the stuff we may have already covered. Um, I've spent a crazy week and I don't have all my notes with me, unfortunately. So uh, if there are parts that I'm, if you feel I'm repeating myself, just go ahead and don't worry about that. But we're gonna try and uh, wrap this up. We're nearly at the end of this project, so we should be able to move on to some really cool, really new stuff very, very soon. Now, if you look at my screen over here, I've got my picture of, let's just go over what we have so far. Uh, I've got the original photograph that we used our refine select to extract from the background, okay? Then we did our filter high pass effect and mashed that out so it's only showing up in certain areas. So as you see, as I turn off and on, you can see certain areas just popping a little bit, all right? Then we went and I added some levels to it. I added a color layer just to mix up the color. You may not be able to tell this on the monitor, but just some subtle color, change the blending mode from just a normal to color and drop the opacity just to add some slight color variation, all right? We also went and created a couple custom brushes. So if I uh, create a new layer and start painting, you can see it's got a brush or two, and we can go and create some cool grunge effects with that. So we've got all this stuff going, and that's good. Um, we need to add a little bit more. So first things first, I want to organize my layers over here just a little bit. Right now, I've got all these effects being applied, but they're not being applied very organized. So we're going to clip them to this bottom layer of Jennifer Lawrence. All right, I believe we touched on this, but all you gotta do is put your cursor right between two layers, press and hold Alt, and your cursor will change to this little box with an arrow. When you click, this layer now will only apply, will only be visible where this layer is visible, right? So again, if I try to move this layer, all right, I can move it around, but it's only gonna be visible where the original Jennifer Lawrence picture is also visible, all right? And this is gonna come be important for what we do next, or well, right after what we're doing next, which is let's just clip all of these to this Jennifer Lawrence layer, all right? So we could clip this guy and clip this guy. So all these little arrows are pointing down to Jennifer Lawrence, so all these arrows only apply where she's visible. Now this is important because what we're gonna be doing right below that, when we created our, our picture of Jennifer Lawrence and we extracted her from the background, we've got all this white here. We're gonna fill that in with something interesting. All right, so uh, we need to go online and get some pictures. And I believe I told you to go and grab those um, pictures of some warehouses or, or some urban or whatnot. Uh, all we're really looking for are pictures that have some interesting textures, noises, whatnot. So I went and found this picture of a warehouse and this picture of a warehouse. All I did was go to Google, type in warehouse, and they were some of the first ones that popped up. Um, You'll want them to be relatively high resolution. I mean, this one was uh, 3000 by 2000. This one was 1000 by 675. Um, but really what I'm looking for is, I'm not trying to try and blend this picture of Jennifer Lawrence into those photographs. So don't worry about that. Instead, what I'm looking for is, I see all these interesting girders and things up here. And it just looks very, very interesting. Same thing up here. It's just a lot of visual interesting noise. And with what we're gonna be doing with this project, that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to right click on this picture, copy the image, go to Photoshop, edit, paste, all right? And it's going to paint now, because of where I did it, it pasted it, clipping it to Jennifer Lawrence. What I wanna do is take this, click and drag right below Jennifer Lawrence, okay? So now, if you can see, I've moved this to the background or right above the background layer, all right? But right before the Jennifer Lawrence layer, all right? Now when I did that, I've got in the background and I can go and play with it a little bit uh, if I want to transform it, if I want to liquefy it. Because again, all I'm really looking for is all this interesting noise. It doesn't look like she's actually in a warehouse, but we just want it to look interesting. So I'm gonna go in and transform a little bit, squeezing things, making it until I find something that I'm happy with. 
All right. So we found this. All right. Cool. And that's 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 looking that's looking more or less right. Except I'd like to go and add some effects to it. Okay. Because this is it's contrasting a little bit. There's a little bit too much darks over here, a little too much lights over here. So I just want this to blend with the picture of Jennifer Lawrence just a little bit. So I'm going to go and write it like we did last time on this little button right here in the layer palette, a little half circle button. Click on there, create a levels layer. And I just want to squeeze these bottom guys just a little bit to do that. The darks become a little darker over here, become a little less dark over here. The lights become a little less light over here. All right. And so as I squeeze that, it just takes the emphasis off the background just a little bit because I want the emphasis to still be on Jennifer Lawrence or whoever your person is. But that just helps take the, the emphasis off the background. All right. So I'm going to close this. Next. We add all these little color accents to the Jennifer Lawrence layer on this layer right here. Okay, I want to do something similar to the background layer. So I'm going to go and click right on this levels layer we just applied. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to change its blending mode from normal down to color. And I'm just going to drop the opacity to 20, 30, somewhere in that range. And then just like we did before, I'm going to go grab my paintbrush tool, grab a soft round brush. And so here we go. All right. And I'm just going to fill this layer with some color. All right. And again, I'm just trying to add a little bit of color. So I did some green, I might go and add some purple in some places. All right, maybe some yellow, because that's kind of the color scheme I've been going for right now. So just touching that up here and there, and then I will probably actually drop the opacity just a little bit. Okay. So as you look, let's see, let's see what we got now. We've got our Jennifer Lawrence with all those effect layers applied to it right here. Then below that, we've got our picture of, of warehouse or whatever picture you chose. Okay. Um, we've got a levels layer applied to it, and we've also got a color layer. Now, just like we do with Jennifer Lawrence, we want these two layers to only affect this warehouse. So I'm going to put my cursor between the two, press and hold the Alt key on my keyboard, click, and now it's clipped to this layer. Do that again, perfect, all right? So now, if you can see my layer stack right here, I've basically got two main pictures. I've got this warehouse picture with some effects applied to it, this Jennifer Lawrence picture with some other effects applied to it, and that's basically my project, all right? Now, I asked you to go and pick up two different pictures of warehouse photos. So, let's go and pick those up again. I had this one, let's grab this second one, all right? And again, you don't have to use warehouse photos. You could do whatever you want, Generally something to do that'll be, that looks kind of grungy would probably be your best bet for what this project is gonna turn out to be. And the nice thing is because we're keeping, let's see, because we're keeping our layers quasi organized like this, we can go back and change these things later. So if we decide later on that, you know what, I don't like this photograph, that's okay, we can swap it out with a different one, do some quick transforming, and you'll be able to change the backgrounds very, very quickly. All right? Now, so I'm gonna go back, right click on this, copy the image, go back to Photoshop, and I wanna paste it, edit, paste, perfect. But now, I don't want this to be clipped to this bottom picture. Instead, if I put my, my cursor between the two and press, well, let's redo this. All I'm gonna do is click and drag it to the very, very top, so it's right below Jennifer Lawrence, okay? And then I'm going to Alt-click between the two. And if I click here again, it'll undo that clipping mask. All right, so see how the box has, and there's the box and the arrow, but the arrow has a slash through it, okay? So if I click now, see how it moved over? That means it's no longer clipped, okay? Perfect, and that's what I want. 
Now, all I'm going to do is move this to some place where I think it'll be interesting. And I might also transform this a little bit. So I'm go edit free transform. <clears throat> all right. I'm just going to try and move this around just a little bit so, so I can find some place where it'll add some interesting textures. So this is, this is looking kind of interesting. All right, perfect. So I hit enter. Good. So I've got this photo here. Now, as this is, it's looking kind of ugly. I mean, we've got this, I mean, it's obvious that these are just two photos put on top of each other. So we're going to fix that in just a minute. But before that, just like we did with our other background picture, let's go and apply some effects to it. So just like before, I'm going to go add another levels to it. All right. I'm just going to squeeze this again because, again, I don't want all the intention to be in the background. I just wanted to add some little bit of noise. Okay. So I do that. All right. And then I'm going to clip this layer to this picture of the background. So I put my cursor between the two, press and hold alt, click. Perfect. All right. Do the same thing, but create a color layer. So new layer, change the blending mode to color. Okay. Drop the opacity down. Okay. Grab your paintbrush. All right. And now let's just paint in some colors. So again, I'm picking my greens and my purples and whatever colors you want to use. Okay. Okay. But again, I only want this showing up on this because if, if you can see, right, especially. Where's my right here? Okay, you see how that purple when I turn off this layer, it's affecting the layer behind it. I don't want that. I only want this layer to affect this layer. So put my cursor into the two, press and hold alt, clip. Wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. There we go. So put my cursor into two, clip it, and we're good. Now, what we want to do is blend this layer into the background a little bit more. All right. So this is where we're going to use for we'll first start using those splatter brushes we ha I had you make the other day. All right. So uh, first things first, we're going to go and on this layer, create a layer mask. All right. So again, at the bottom of this layer palette, you're going to find this little button that has a square with a circle in it. I click on that. Boom. Perfect. All right. And this layer mask is all white. So that means everything in this layer is visible. If I paint black, it becomes invisible. All right. Remember this. Okay. And if I paint white, it comes back. All right. So what I want to do is go and grab one of those splatter brushes we created. Okay. So I'm just going to use this one and I'm going to go and paint with black using my splatter brush and just try and make it hard to tell where one photo starts and the other begins. Okay. So see how I painted, it's very hard to tell where the edges of these paintings are. All right. And I've still got some textures from the first, still got some textures from the second, but it just mixes things up just a little bit. Okay. And that adds some nice texture to our background. Okay, and hopefully without taking away too much attention from Jennifer Lawrence. All right, perfect. Now we want to do the same thing to Jennifer Lawrence. We want to add just a touch of this splattering effect to her. But now I don't want to just go click on her layer and start painting. Nah, yeah, because that's that's we're going to do something like that. But we want that to be a little more controlled. So I'm going to hit edit step backwards. Okay. Instead, we want to do this on a layer mask. Okay. But I'd like to keep this lit, this layer mask we created earlier still working just as nice as it was before. Okay. So what you, we need to do is click on this layer and specifically click on the layer mask on this layer. If you just click over here, or if you have the actual image, the layer itself selected, it's not going to work. You have to make sure you click on the layer mask. All right. And what we're going to do is create a layer mask for this layer mask. All right. So while this is selected, I go back down, hit the add layer mask button. 
and we get a second layer mask to paint on. And now if I paint on this, it'll also mask the original layer, but it'll keep this original mask going. That way, if we want to make any other changes down the road, we can. All right? So, same drill. Paint with black to erase, paint with white to bring back. And all I'm going to do is just paint a little bit down here. All right? I want to keep her face looking pretty much the same. So I'm going to go back. Whoops. I want to paint with white now. All right? And I'm just going to try and bring back just a little bit. Uh-oh. All right, so I can't paint with white because when I do that, it's starting to bring stuff back to this layer. So I am I am on the wrong layer. Let's double check this. All right. So I don't. All I want to do is paint on. Okay, 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 okay. So what we need to do is have. This gets a little tricky. So I mean, you just saw it threw me off. So we want to make sure that the layer is selected and this layer mask is selected. That way. Photoshop knows what we're trying to mask, okay? So when we do that, we paint, okay? Oh, come on, work with me here, Photoshop. Okay, so this works before. Give me just a second. Okay, guys, all right, sorry about that. Um, so it was tricky. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you have the actual layer mask selected when you create the new layer mask, when you click on this little button, it will create a, a vector mask, which is not what we want, and that's why it wasn't working, okay? So um, if you still have this extra layer mask or whatever, or whatever looks like a layer mask over here, just click on it and drag delete it, all right? And when it does, it'll say delete vector mask, and we don't want a vector mask. That was the problem, we want a layer mask, so I hit okay, all right? So we need to make sure is click the actual photograph. Okay, make sure this is selected. Okay, not the layer mask, the actual layer. All right, go and create a new layer mask right here. And now it'll be hard to tell the difference. Wait a minute. Give me a second, make sure this is working. Okay guys, so I'm not sure what's going on. I've done this before, but it doesn't seem to be working now. So um, what we're gonna do instead is we're going to create a backup of this picture of your of your character all right so i'm just going to um edit well all i'm going to do is click and drag it down to a new layer to create a copy of it and then i'm going to hide this backup layer all right i don't know why if the layer mask wasn't working i've done it before um but it doesn't seem to be working now so this way this layer will store a backup of the original mask if we make any changes we don't like, all right? Uh, but we can always come back to it later, all right? So with this layer selected, I will now go and click on it and grab my spider brush and just paint out just a little bit on the edges, all right? Just to add a little bit of that splattering effect, all right? And now with that, let's look at what we've got. We've got our original picture of Jennifer Lawrence with all these clipped to it, or not clipped to it anymore, so we'll reclip it. All right, so we've got Jennifer Lawrence and a couple of different layers clipped to it. We've got our backup copy of Jennifer Lawrence. We've got our, I don't know, layer, layer masked uh, background right over here. And then we've got the original background where everything else is, all right? Now, in the last home stretch, we create one more layer at the very top of our document, okay? We grab our splatter brush, grab some paint that kind of matches the color scheme we've been going with. So I've been doing greens and purples and a little bits of yellows, so I'll pick some of those. And I'm just going to spend some time adding some of that to the background. I might go and find uh, the other, one of my other layers, and, or my other, bleh, sorry, one of my other brushes, spend some time painting those in, and I'll maybe go and now change my eraser tool, okay, change it to one of those splatter brushes, and just paint some stuff out, all right. 
Now I'll maybe go and create a new layer and paint a different color on this layer. And I'll make it say green. All right, and I'll paint. And I'm just now having fun. I can do whatever I'm wanting here, getting all sorts of different effects. Okay, and it's all kind of just blending together. All right, and you can play with this a little bit. All right. Some of it might come over a little stronger than you want. That's okay. You just play with it, find what you want. All right, and towards the end, you should have this interesting grunge photo effect. All right, now uh, I'll look forward to seeing what you have next time we meet, and uh, we can talk over any questions you have or any things you wanted to, uh, if thing was unclear or not. Um, but uh, I look forward to seeing what you have. So. Thanks again. Hope you have a good day and I look forward to talking to you again uh, tomorrow. Till then. Bye.